non bank lenders have been securitizing loans to shore up cash amidst a liquidity crisis. Credit Access Grameen recently sold loans by about 139 crores, taking the total amount securitized in this financial year to about 250 crore rupees. Is the lender now comfortable with its liquidity position? Do they plan to sell more assets? Let's get in and ask Mr. Uday Kumar Heber. He is the Managing Director and CEO at Credit Access Grameen. Uh, thanks very much for joining in, Mr. Heber. Uh, just starting off first with, uh, you know, your overall calendar or your plan that you've chalked out for FY20 in terms of securitization. You've already done about 250 crores. Is there more lined up? Yes, uh, uh, almost 20% of our uh, fundraising will be a short-term nature, which could be securitization or a direct assignment or a commercial paper. So that is what our plan. And uh, overall, 80% will be non-short-term, uh, maybe either medium or long-term. Uh, as you see in the, in the first quarter one, uh, we raised over 900 crores, of which about 250 is uh, the, the securitization and DA. And these are the calendar what we have. Uh, almost 20% of our requirement will come through this securitization and DA, and which is uh, going to be the way for the entire financial year. And we have enough uh, uh, opportunities for that and enough demand for that. Okay, so that's 20% of your funding requirement. What about the rest? I believe you also have a very diversified funding uh, resource uh, with 30 commercial banks. You've got uh, you know, deals with uh, FIIs, you've got financial institutions, private sector banks. So you're pretty well diversified in terms of the kind of funding uh, sources that you have. Yes, yes, we have been uh, well diversified. The liabilities have been our strength all the time. Uh, we, we raise money from uh, domestic banks, private, public, or uh, uh, foreign banks, and from abroad, like foreign portfolio investors and uh, FIs like IFC, and, and also through uh, ECB in the INR. And we have a very good, almost 30% of our funding is a long-term funding, which is from FIs, uh, FI, FIs, as well as the domestic uh, FIs like NABARD, uh, CDB, Mudra, that type of institutes. And under balance, about 50% is from the commercial banks uh, within India. This, is a, this has been our uh, strong liability diversification all these last four or five years. And we continue to have such diversification. And uh, this year, we are looking at enhancing the foreign, in, uh, foreign uh, money or foreign liabilities higher because there is an opportunity to borrow from uh, internationally through non-INR or uh, Forex also uh, permitted by RBI recently. So we are exploring those opportunities. Uh, looking the year ahead, uh, we think we should be able to increase this foreign uh, uh, liability uh, in this year. Uh, we would reach about 40% of our year funding from that source. Okay, so that's uh, going to be a big jump, 40% uh, from uh foreign uh, in investors and then you've got 20% uh, coming in um, as you already mentioned uh, from securitization uh, no uh, so basically you you're saying that you're comfortable with with regards to your overall funding you're not you're not interested in looking at either NCDs or CPs or mutual funds as such uh, no domestic NCD at this point of time, uh, no, nor we never uh, availed this domestic NCD. Uh, the international NCD, of course, we avail, uh, which is one of the resource, which is always three years plus. So that, that always we avail, but domestic we are not looking at this point of time. Okay. Well, Mr. Heber, let's get down to the business part of it. And, uh, you know, it, it had been a challenging second half of, uh, you know, 2019 for the NBFC sector. But you've sustained a re decent enough AUM growth of 44%. Is that uh, something that you expect to enhance come FY20? Yes, it was, it was a good year for us, a uh, large financial year. We withered uh, this, uh, this liquidity issues. We never uh, faced any challenges and we grew 44%. We anticipate to repeat the same. Uh, that is what we look at for next two, three years. We still grow between 35 to 45%, which, uh, which is possible. And there's enough, enough potential outside, particularly in rural, for our kind of business. And, and liquidity wise, we are very comfortable. So with these factors are positive for us, uh, we don't see any challenge to grow. 
Okay. Also, uh, let's talk about uh, the overall plans of diversification and having a more granular approach to growth and concentrating growth in specific regions itself. So, uh, you know, if we talk about your increasing share of districts with exposures of less than 0.5%, that is likely to go up versus a bigger concentration on individual uh, uh, areas like Maharashtra and Karnataka. So, is that the approach that you're taking, getting more granular in nature? Yes, I think I think you have exactly uh, told that. So our our growth in Karnataka, Maharashtra is uh, reducing, though it is growing. But our growth in other states like Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Orissa are actually increasing in, in a quite faster rate. And there, the districts where we entered, where uh, most of them are less than 0.5 or 1 percent, where the opportunity is quite high. Our our process is to enter into a district. Uh, our, our, uh, deep dive in that district in two three years time we will be number one or two in that district there is a process in this process in the, in the karnataka and Maharashtra district by and large we are number one in every district where we operate in these two states and other states is the next uh, uh, next growth momentum is happening uh, we expect the other states uh, all district to grow uh, this and next financial year Okay, got that. On the other uh, uh, part, which is the provisions, I mean, for quarter four, because of the one-off provision and due to change in the EC and methodology, uh, you did see that spiking a bit. But are you looking to be more conservative with regards to provisions as well, come to FI20? Uh, we, we have been conservative in provisioning, which uh, the, the methodology adopted uh, already last year. I think we will continue with the same methodology, there will not be change. The methodology specifically uh, did uh, two important things. One is uh, the, the defining the stage two and stage three. So stage two is any, any, any uh, delinquency more than 15 days, we treat as stage two, and any delinquency more than 60 days, Dealing, uh, as, as state three, which means the provisioning, provisioning will increase because of that. So which creates a cushion in our balance sheet so that it's, it's nothing but a conservative approach. If you see our balance sheet, we have one, we had 1.17 percentage of provision as against GNP of 0.61 percent. I think this approach will continue to have in our book so that we would remain a bit conservative in, in, in this particular provisioning norms. And cost of funds also should remain under control for you? It is actually, you know, if you, if you look at the continuing on an average basis, our cost of fund actually come down. Despite uh, Q3, there was slightly increase in cost of fund uh, because of some liquidity crunch around the cost of fund impact was there. But overall for the year, our cost average cost of fund actually come down. So we anticipate to continue this trend, but uh, it may take little more time now. Uh, but our cost of fund is not increasing at this point of time. And uh, we anticipate to maintain our uh, cost to customer actually within 18, 19% or, or almost 80% of our lending is within 18 and 19% to our customers, which will remain same for uh, at least for next two, three quarters. Okay, got that. Uh, Mr. Eber, just one last question then. And RBI is looking to issue draft guidelines for on-tap licensing for small finance bank by the end of August 2019. How well suited do you think you are to uh, apply for this uh, SFB license? Uh, see, this opportunity was there for us four years back and we, we did evaluate it and then, then we decided not to go for it. We, we our, our belief is to work in rural, to work in uh, low-income uh, strata of the population, of uh, the regulation under NBS MFA is quite good, and we would uh, like to remain a, a focused MFA player, and we don't have any interest to get into SFBs. Uh, we would continue to work with the customer segment, continue to define and uh, um, create products for them and process for them, and be with the customer's behavior. For that, this license, this regulation is quite enough. Uh, we would continue to remain as NBFC MFI for this business. So I think uh, we, are, we are very clear in our mind.